shout of praise, church. We're going to teach you all a new song this morning that speaks about God's ableness in our lives. And there's a verse in Ephesians chapter 3 that says, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we could ask or imagine. This morning I want that thought to just resonate in your minds. What can the Lord do for us and what has he proven? Let's sing this out. When did I start to forget all of the great things you did? When did I throw away faith for the impossible? How did I start to believe you weren't sufficient for me? Why do I talk myself out of seeing miracles? You are more than able. You are more. are more than able. You are more than able. Who am I to deny what the Lord can do? Something 
is coming, I feel the winds blowing with mystery. Things unseen, the tides are now changing. I see the dawn breaking, it's happening, the awakening. So come, Holy Spirit. Sing this out this morning. Open the heavens. Open the heavens. Fling wide the gates. Unleash your presence. Pour out your grace. Show me your glory. The power of your love. Cause even a glimpse is more than enough for me. so much more than we've known before so come holy spirit come and hover over us holy spirit come open the heavens fling wide the gates unleash your prayer Let's declare this together this morning. Cause we're gonna see those dry bones dancing. We're gonna see those strongholds bow. We're gonna see the things of heaven here now. We're gonna see a new revival. We're gonna see. We're gonna see the things of heaven here right now. Come on, lift your voice this morning. We're gonna see those tribes dancing. We're gonna see those strongholds bow. We're gonna see. Hey, good morning, church family. Do you want more of Jesus in your life? There is more. He is more than able to do above what you can ever ask or think or imagine in your life. And there is more to, to have a relationship with Him. So I just want to ask you this morning, are you ready for that? I'm asking you, are you ready for that? Do you want more of that? And that is my prayer and our, my heart for our church. Let's, let's pray together. Lord, uh, we just come before you today wanting more of you. 
We want more of your presence. Holy Spirit, we need more of you in our lives. And so, Lord, show us the more. Take us to new places. Show us more of who you are and your character and what you want more for us. And so, Lord, we submit ourselves to you, asking you to move in this place today, to move in our hearts. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Everybody said together, amen, amen. You may be seated. Well, good morning again, once again. Come on, good morning. morning. We're so glad that you are here. Thanks for being a part uh, of our services today. My name is Matt. I'm the pastor here. And if you're new with us uh, today, I want to say welcome. We're so glad that you're here. I want to welcome those of you who are joining us online. Thanks for being a part uh, of our church family and, and joining us today. And so, hey, church family, would you give it up for those who are joining us online and for our first time guests? Come on. Let's, let's thank them. Again, thanks for being here. Hey, when you came in, you should have been handed a worship guide, and there's all kinds of information in there, including my message notes. And then also, too, uh, there's a Connect card, and we ask everyone, members, attenders, guests alike, if you would please uh, to fill that out over the service. We appreciate that. And then what we do is during our offering time as we leave, we have a couple of buckets there in the back, and we just ask you to put that card in there. If you have a prayer request, we'd love to pray for you. If you have a need, we would love uh, just to be your church family and to walk beside you uh, in life. But uh, anybody, anyway, anybody excited to be at church today? Yeah. I am excited and pumped. I'm excited to be with you. Uh, I just want you guys to know, I don't tell you enough, I love you very much. And it's an honor to be uh, your pastor, and I'm just so grateful uh, that you're here uh, with us today. Now, before I, I dive into our message today, um, I just need to just give you a few things about what's going on in the life of our church. There is a lot of fun stuff, and I'm really excited about it. Today is our church picnic, our annual church picnic at the park, at the pavilion. Hope you guys will come out. Five o'clock, we're grilling dogs, we're grilling burgers, we got chips for you, drinks, all that kind of stuff. You want to bring a dessert or a side, feel free to come on. Uh, we just want you to come on, all right? Everybody with me? I know, are y'all out there today? All right. <laughs> Uh, and so I hope you'll come today or, and uh, enjoy that with us. Next week, we got our summer blast with our kids. We have three four nights, uh, three nights, and then a night at the pool here in town with, with our summer blast. I encourage you to get your kids signed up. You can do that uh, in the lobby there. And then actually the week after that, it's probably my favorite Sunday of the year, and that is where we do lake baptisms at Masters Beach. And so it's really exciting to see the changed lives from camp and all those different things, and um, we, we love to celebrate that. And so if you are interested in being baptized and you've, you've made a decision for Christ and you would like to be involved in that, you can just put that uh, on your Connect card. Uh, but there's one other thing I need to uh, address before I get going, and that is I get asked a lot, okay, Matt, I, we want to connect. Like, how do I connect? Or I get asked, hey, when are small groups going to start again? I want to address that right now, Okay. So we launch small groups in the fall, kind of when the time school starts. And it's just a great way. Sundays, I got to tell you, is not enough. You need more. You need more relationships. Um, if you want to get to know people, that's the way we do it here at the Heights. And we have all kinds of small groups. Uh, anywhere, if you want to work out, you want to play basketball, you want to do a Bible study group, we have all different kinds of groups. And uh, we're going to start those up at the end of this month. And if you would like uh, to lead a group, you're interested in leading a group and taking what you already do, <laughs> you're already doing some stuff anyway, and you want to use it for God and you'd be interested in uh, leading a group, let us know on your Connect card as well. Sound good? Sound everybody? All right. Well, today uh, we're continuing our series that we're calling The Throne. And really, if you're, if you're new with us, this, this is uh, actually the last week uh, of the series. And so let me just really just kind of catch up, uh, get you catch up if this is your first time hearing this. Uh, we've really been studying the throne of Israel, the, the kingship of Israel. And back in the day, um, the people of Israel, they were looking around at all the other different people groups and all the other kingdoms, and they had a king, and that to them, they didn't. And so they were looking at everybody else, and they wanted what everybody else wanted. And so they said, God, I want that. We never do that, do we? Yeah? <laughs> and so they wanted a king. But here's the thing. God wanted to be their king. He wanted to be the one to take care of them. But no, I want to be like everybody else. And so God warned them. 
He's like, hey, if you get a king, here's what's going to happen. They're going to take your, your kiddos as slaves. They're going to they're, they're gonna tax you. They're going to do all these different things. But no, we want a king. We want to be like everybody else. And so God let them. And so what we've been doing over the course of this series is we've just been studying this throne and, and, and the whole aspect that God wants, not only did God want to be their king back then, but God wants to be our king. And so week one, we looked at King Saul. Remember the first, the first king of Israel? And he listened to all the other voices except for God's. And we do the same thing. Week two, we looked at David. Uh, David, the man after God's own heart. But his relationships, remember, were a mess. It was, it was like Maury Povich. It was like Jerry Springer-esque, right? You remember that? And, and listen, our relationships can be like that too. But God honoring people, they deal with their stuff and their relationships. And then last week we looked at King Solomon, the wealthiest, the wisest man of all, of all the kings. But yet over time, his heart was pulled away from God. God wasn't on the throne of his heart because he allowed culture and the things of this world to pull it. His, his uh, heart from God. Remember, everybody with me? Okay. So here we are, week four, and we're going to be studying uh, what happened after Solomon. Now, it's important to know, know this. When Solomon was still king, um, he was told, hey, man, uh, we looked at this last week, that God was going to pull the kingdom away from him because his heart was pulled away from God. Hey, in your son's life, I'm going to tear apart the kingdom. Uh, and so, so what ended up happening, there was this man named Jeroboam. Everybody say Jeroboam. Jeroboam. All right, Jeroboam. And, and he was a man, uh, he was known as, a, a, early on at least, as a man of God. He was a man of stature, the Bible says. And, and so God appeared to him, and a prophetic word. A prophet comes to him on the middle of the street and says, Hey, yo, dude, hey, after a while, the kingdom is going to be breaking up, and you're going to be in charge of one of it, a part of it. And so Solomon gets word of this, and so what does he do? He tries to chase him down. Jeroboam leaves, okay? I need you to put that back in your memory bank. Now, all of a sudden, uh, Solomon dies. And so his son, very similar, is Rehoboam. Everybody say Rehoboam. 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 His son becomes king. He becomes king. He's the new king of Israel. And then what happens is Solomon's entourage, the elders, the, the people who, who were serving Solomon, comes up to Rehoboam and says, Hey, yo, uh, we've been working really hard underneath your dad, and it's been a lot of work. So here's what will happen. If you'll just go a little bit easier on us, I mean, I know, look how big the kingdom is, you know, and what's happened, all the things that have been built. Well, that's been built on our backs, and we're kind of done. So if you'll just be ease up just a little, we'll just love you and we'll serve you till you die. It sounds good, right? Well, then Rehoboam, he, he talks to his friends, the younger guys. And they're like, um, don't listen to that. Because you want to make a name for yourself. You want to be great, right? So you, what you need to do is you need to go, you thought you, my dad was bad. You just wait. Now I'm going to be even more strict. So he had a decision to make. So he says, hey, uh, I'm going to wait three days, and I'm going to come back, and I'm going to give you my decision. Am I going to be harder, or am I going to ease up? So three days later, everybody comes back, and who is in the crowd? Jeroboam. So you got Rehoboam, you got Jeroboam. Jeroboam. And here's, here's what the Bible says here in 1 Kings. We'll put that there on the screen there. It says, three days later, Jeroboam and all the people returned to Rehoboam. Okay, I just want to make sure we get those not mixed up. Uh, As the king had said, come back to me in three days. The king answered the people harshly, rejecting the advice given him by the elders. He followed the advice of the young men and said, my father made your yoke heavy. I'll make it even heavier. My father scourged you with whips. I will scourge you with scorpions. You see, pride was sitting in the heart of this man, Rehoboam, because he wanted to make a name for himself. The pride. I'm better. I'm going to be better than my dad, and here's what I'm going to do. Everybody with me? Well, that didn't sit well with the people of Israel. Watch what happens a few verses later. Watch what it says. When all Israel saw that the king refused to listen to him, to them, they answered the king, what share do we have in David? What part in Jesse's son? 
to your tents, Israel. Look after your own, own house, David. <laughs> we gone. We ain't listening to you no more. And what ended up happening is 10, there's 12 tribes of Israel, 10 of them broke off. And they became the northern half. For all you history buffs, they maintain this label that we call Israel. And then the two in the south, they became Judah. And Rehoboam led the two in the south, it was called Judah. And now Jeroboam became the leader of the, the northern. Everybody with me? Okay, I'm giving you a little bit of history here. So now, here Jeroboam's in charge of the northern half. He has seen what happened with Rehoboam, with his pride, and how it just turned the king of, kingdom of Israel up, upside down. And you would think that he had learned his lesson about pride, and pride getting in the way. But he had his own problem, and rather than trust God, he took things into his own hands because he loves control, Anybody like that? Control freaks out there? You got the t-shirt on that? And so here's Jeroboam. I want you to see his problem. Watch this on the screen. Jeroboam thought to himself, the kingdom will now likely revert to the house of David. If these people go up to offer sacrifices at the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem, they will again give their allegiance to their Lord, Rehoboam, king of Judah. Let me explain this. So for all the Jewish holidays, they would go back home to Jerusalem. And so here's Jeroboam, the new leader of Israel, and he's thinking, if they go back to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and all my people go there, then they're going to want to go back home and be back in that place. And I'm going to lose my kingdom. And so the pride steps up, because I know better. We never do that, right? So watch, watch what he does. He says, they will ki kill me and return to King Rehoboam. After seeking advice, the king made two golden calves, and he said, to the people, it's too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Here are your gods, Israel, who brought you out of Egypt. So he had the people worship these two golden calves instead of God. Because he was afraid of losing control. And because he took control, because he thought he knew better, because the pride took over, he would end up losing out too. Can I just tell you today, pride is no good. Pride leads us into bad spots, amen? And that tore apart all of Israel. Pride. In fact, the Bible says this in Proverbs 16, 18, that pride goes before destruction. You may have heard, pride goes before the fall. A haughty spirit before a fall. Now, I don't know about you, but maybe you experienced that at work. You experienced that maybe in your home life. Just pride sets in. And pride leads to no good. It leads to bad places. In fact, pride gets in your way of your relationship with God. I want you to see this in James chapter 4. The half-brother of Jesus says this, but he gives more grace, and I'm thankful that God gives grace. But it says the, that's why Scripture says God opposes the proud, but shows favor to who? The humble. See, pride, not only does it cause a fall, not only does it cause companies to fall apart, families to fall apart, everything to fall apart, it gets in the way of your relationship with God. God and pride can't mix. It can't. And listen, God can't be your king if pride is rampant in your life. Everybody with me? Now, here's the thing about pride. And obviously, you can tell that's what we're talking about today, is pride. Like pride, with pride, like many other things, we see it in other people real easy. But in ourselves, we don't. We look over it, right? And I just want to just, because it's so easy to see in somebody else, and we never really look at it, see it in ourselves. I just want to help us to see it in ourselves for just a moment. If you'll just allow me, bear with me for just a moment. How do you know you have pride in your life? I want you to write this in. First, you need control. Just like Jeroboam and Rehoboam. You need control. And you work so hard to control situations and people. And, and it just doesn't work. 
In fact, going back to the book of James, the half-brother of Jesus, he says, what causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? Like there's something in there that you want and you need to happen. And it says you desire, but you do not have it, so you kill. So like you just take it into your own hands. Like you need it how you want it. You covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you just quarrel and fight. Like, I need this, and so rather than ask God, or, or rather than ask anybody else, I just got to take control because I can do better. It says, you do not have because you do not ask God, and when you ask, you do not receive, because you ask with wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your, on your pleasures. See, at the heart of the issue of this is that many of us, you trust yourself more than God. Mic drop. I can do better. I can do better than God. I can do better than someone else. So I got to do it my way. That, my friends, is pride. It's pride. And not only can we do better, but here's the second one. It's very similar. Is that we know better. We know better. Uh, Growing up, uh, my kids would take piano lessons from their mother. And my, my wife is a phenomenal musician, and uh, she's got her master's degree in piano pedagogy. She's awesome teaching piano and stuff. So my, she would teach my kids piano. And I just got to tell you, it's harder to teach your kids piano than somebody else because they feel like they can get a little bit lippy to mommy, right? And so I remember <laughs> playing the piano, and, and so they're eight, nine years old, or seven, or whatever it was, and, and so they would be playing the scale and Boo, 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 boo. And so she would, I hear, um, don't put your fingers like that. Do, do it like this. And she would tell them to do their fingers a certain way. And they're like, Mom, that's stupid. That doesn't make sense to me. I think it's better to do it like this. But see, the thing is, they didn't know any better because they didn't know that later on you needed to do it th- her way because it would help you play better later on. Does that make sense? And so here, here is an eight-year-old trying to tell their mother, who has a master's degree in piano, how to do it. <laughs> because they know better. We know better. God, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and we're going to look at some verses later on, the creator of the universe. And I can just imagine him looking at us when we we know better. Proverbs 26, 12 tells us this. Do you see a person wise in their own eyes? There is more hope for a fool than for them. Because for some of us, no one can tell us different because we just know. Whether it's at work, family life, School, wherever it is, we just know better. Now, up to this point, some of you are like, I don't struggle with that. Uh, I don't, I'm, I'm good with all that. Well, if I hadn't gotten you up to this point, I'm going to get you now. Here's the third one. You won't ask for help. This one hits home. <laughs> Especially in times when we have need. Like, you don't want anybody to know. You don't want anybody to help you. You, you can do it yourself. Hey, church, i got to tell you something. That's pride. And God and pride doesn't mix. And where I hear this the most is like when somebody's in need, or, or maybe it's even financial need, okay? And like, hey, can we just come beside you and help? Well, no, someone else could use that help more than me. Can I just tell you, that is pride. Can I, can I just give you a different way of thinking about when someone wants to help or allowing help to come into our life? Whatever form it is, maybe it's with your kids, um, you know, I, let me, early on, in, I, when I, my family lived in Missouri, we moved to Texas, and we had three kids, and it was just trying to keep up with all the kids. You know, we, we needed help with the kids. And early on, it felt very pride. Well, no one else can watch them but me, Right? And no one else can do it exactly like me. I I found out really quick I needed help, right? 
And so the thing is, is when you, when you don't allow people to come in and help you, you're denying them the privilege of blessing you and God blessing you and God blessing them to help give. Everybody with me? Like, you open yourself up to experiencing God more when you put down your pride and allow people to come into your life and help you. But when we say, no, I got it, then this is what you do to God. In fact, the Bible tells us this, what we're to do in Galatians chapter 6. It says, carry each other's burdens. Like, we're supposed to help one another. And in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. Like, that's God's plan, that we help one another. But for many of us, we won't allow that to come into our life because we got it. Everybody okay? I know I stepped on a few toes there, maybe for a second. But that's how we know we have pride. And here's the last one. I think it's just the most obvious one that we all can kind of say, oh, yeah, is you dominate conversations. I know there's lots of different ways to recognize pride, but this goes beyond having the gift of gab. You know, you know the people like to talk, 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 talk. No, this goes beyond that, is that you just like to talk about yourself and always talk about what you think. Like you're always in a conversation and you've got to be right all the time. That's pride. When you're in a conversation and you never ask questions of the other person. And it's always about you. That is pride. In fact, Proverbs 18.2 tells us, Fools find no pleasure in understanding, but they delight in airing their own opinions. The Bible calls you a fool. It's pride. Listen, when pride is rampant in our lives, it pushes God away. And it affects our relationship with God. Now, you may be asking, well, well why? Well, here, here it is, real simple. Pride elevates us to the place of God. Like, you're basically saying you're God. I know better. <laughs> I can do better than God. I don't need help. Right? You've made yourself God. He's not king. You are. Everybody with me? So what I want to do, just in the few minutes I got left, as I want to talk about, we all have this, okay? Uh, at the end of the day, I, I hope in those four, I probably, including myself, I think in all four of them, but I think all of us can honestly say in one of them, that relates to me sometimes. It's how do I remove pride? How do I get that out of my life? Because I don't want God to oppose me. I mean, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be in opposition to God. Anybody? Like, I don't want to be. So how do we remove it? Well, here's the antidote. And it's real simple. It's humility. It's humbling ourselves. But most of us, we don't know how to do that. Like, what does that look like? But here's what I know. In Proverbs 11, too, it says, when pride comes, then comes disgrace. Okay, there's the fall. But with humility comes wisdom. Humility changes things. Humility removes pride. Now, what I want to share with you is kind of like, this is the price of admission today, okay? Here it is. You can remove pride, or you can have someone else remove it for you. You can remove pride, but since God wants to have a relationship with you, he opposes proud, being proud. A lot of times he will try to take it out, or culture and other people will take it out. Anybody had that happen to them before? You know? You get to choose. You get to choose. Now, in my house, i got to admit, I am not a do-it-yourself kind of guy. Okay? I'm not really great at this stuff. And some of you I've called, help, I need help. You know? But I've had to learn a few things. Now, let's just say, for example, you're plumbing. You could do it yourself, right? you got the good old Drano. you got a, you got a, uh, a drain that's plugged up. You can do it yourself. You can pour in some Drano, and hopefully that thing will go down. If not, you've got some other things you can do. I call this the rotor rooter. It's not fun, right? Anybody got one of those at your house? Come on, anybody? 
You don't? Well, I'm a step ahead. I, I didn't realize that. But you could take this into your, in your clogs and you can get all that stuff unclogged. You can do it yourself. But here's the thing. If you don't do it yourself and you've got a plumbing problem and you bring in a plumber, right? Hey, side note, here's a message within a message. It's not spiritual. If you're a young person, go into a trade. There's lots of, lots of people need help and you can make a whole lot of money because I've paid it. <laughs> See, you can do it yourself or it gets so bad that somebody else has to do it and you pay. It's the same thing with pride. You have a choice. You can deal with your own pride and it goes much better than if you'll allow it to stay. And can I just tell you, if you're a Christ follower, God doesn't want it to stay, and it'll be a lot pricier. Everybody with me? Price of admission today. Okay. So catch it early. So here's what we do. The first thing is to confess it. When you see it, don't cover up. <laughs> don't pretend. Confess it to God and to others. You need people in your life. You can say, I'm struggling with pride right now. And I see it. Proverbs 28, 13 tells us, whoever conceals their sin does not prosper, but the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. Like it's better if you'll deal with it rather than having somebody else try to pull it out of you. This is good stuff. Everybody with me today? Here's the second thing. You need to value the Lord's thoughts over your own. It's going back to the piano. Do, 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 do. I know it. This is how you're supposed to do it. No. <laughs> God knows. Watch this in Isaiah 55. Watch this. It says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. He's basically saying, I don't think like you. I'm higher than you. Why? Because I'm God. And you ain't. He says, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts, your thoughts. Let me ask you. Do you take the time to see what God says about something? Do you pray about it? Or is it just, I know. I know better. I can do better. I don't need help. Or do we take actually the time it takes to find out what God says? Here's the third one. And this get into our space here a little bit, but it's putting others first. Do we put others first? Well, it's about serving God and people. One of the greatest ways to crunch pride is to serve. And I got to be honest, many times we're just too good to serve, to give back. I don't have time. I got other things to do. Things are more important. I'd rather be served. Can I just tell you that wasn't Jesus? That wasn't Jesus. Uh, he said this in Mark 10, verse 45. It says, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. And he gave his life for people who didn't appreciate it. <laughs> well, I'll serve, or I'll, I'll do something for people, but they just don't appreciate it. Everybody with me? I'm asking you with me? Uh, about six weeks ago, I had the privilege of going to a pastor's retreat, and uh, I was with 15 other passenger, or passengers, pa pastors, um, and in uh, South Carolina, the Charleston area, and just being poured into. And one of the cool treats that they had at, there was they had a guy from the Dale Carnegie Foundation uh, a man that 
helped people all across the country with their public speaking. Like from, from TED Talk people to CEOs, like how they present themselves. Like this dude was awesome. He brought them in and allowed the pastors to get some tips. It was really uh, intimidating that here's this guy like, I mean, the man. His name was Jim. And I'm pulling up my YouTube messages and he's critiquing it. But he was so gracious, giving me pointers and everything. But here's what struck me. is here was this guy that for the 30 minutes he gave me, he would charge thousands of dollars to people to do that. And he did that for me. But later that night, I'm at dinner, and I'm eating, and I'm done. And he says, hey, can I take your plate? Um, you want some more to drink? Hey, what dessert do you want? I'll, I'll, I'll get you some. And he did that for every pastor around the table. Like he was waiting on us. Like if there was anybody, like a man so successful, didn't need another dime for the rest of his life because of how successful he was. But here he was <laughs> serving me. Like I should be, I feel like I should be doing something for you, like what you've done for me. But he was serving me. He wasn't too good. Matthew 23 tells us this. It says, the greatest among you will be your servant. Here it is. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled. There's that theme. You have a choice. You could do it or it'll be done for you. And those who humble themselves will be exalted. Listen, it's a chosen position. Either you will choose it or it'll be chosen for you. Where's your heart? Do you have a servant heart? Or do we want people to serve us? Here's the last one. And we'll be done. To get that rotor rooter, or to get that pride out, you need to give permission for people to point it out in your life. Now, this is the hard part. This is the hard part. Actually allowing people to speak into your lives. And that's where the pride comes in because we don't want anybody to tell us that there's something wrong with us. I don't know how many people really enjoy that, right? But listen, the Bible tells us this in Proverbs 27, 17. Is iron sharpens iron, so does one sharpen another. And we need people. We all have blind spots. That's why a month from now when we get into groups, you need to get into a group because you need people that know you and that can point that out it makes us better. We need people to speak into our lives to help us, to help us grow. Because we don't want to mess this up. I don't know about you, but when the Bible says <laughs> with pride that it puts us in opposition to God, I don't want that. I want that relationship with God. And so I want to do whatever I need to do to get that out. And so the choice is, will I do it or will I allow life and all that to do it for me? I know over the course of this message, this is not the most fun message to give but pride will derail your life it changed the course of Israel and their history and the kingship and we need to crunch it church I don't know about you but I would love for the heights to be known for our humility for the way that we serve for the way that we crunch our pride and we love people. Amen? So let's make the choice today. If you would, bow your heads with me. Let's pray. Lord, I come before you just...
I want you to be king of my heart. And I don't want my own pride to get in the way. And so, Lord, I come before you as a leader and as a pastor. Lord, if you see any wicked way in me and my pride, just reveal it. And, Lord, I want to confess it. I want to deal with it. And, Lord, um, I pray for every person in this room and you would help us all to deal with it. Would you just speak to our hearts today? Would you help us to see what's in our souls? Help us to see our actions and those things that are, really, to be honest, that are offensive to you. And Lord, I pray today that we would repent and be made right today. Maybe you're here this morning and your pride has been a way of life and you've never submitted yourself to God. You never humbled yourself enough to give your life to God. Can I just tell you, your pride puts you in opposition. And until you humble yourself and say, God, I need you, you will never be saved. You'll never have a home in heaven. Because it's only by surrender that we are saved and made right with God. And so if that's you today and you're ready to go all in with him and to give your life to him and put down your pride and submit your life to him, I invite you to pray. Pray just like this. Lord, I, I put my pride down today. I want to humble myself before you. And, and Lord, for so long I've lived life that I'm king and I don't want that anymore. I want you to be king. And I'm tired of doing things my way. And so, Lord, the best that I know how, I give my life to you. I submit myself to you. I surrender. Be my king. Come into my heart and be my Lord. Lord, I pray for those who prayed that prayer. Would you just encourage them today? And then for the rest of us, Lord, I, I pray that we would be a church that's humble before you. A church that looks to serve rather than to be served. A church that's interested in others. A church that doesn't know better, but Lord, we trust you and we look to you for help. Lord, help us to be humble before you today. Lord, we love you. Have your way in this. I'm going to ask you in the quietness of this moment, would you just stand with me? And we're going to sing this song together. And as we go through if you want prayer, we'll have some prayer partners in the back. love to pray for you. If you want to take communion, you can do that as well. But uh, I want to just invite you to let this sit for a moment and look at what God wants to say to you today. Let's sing together.
church, as we wrap up our time together this morning, we're going to end with a time of offering. And if you're prepared for that, there'll be a couple of buckets in the back. And if not, there's a few ways that you can give on the screen behind me. Let's pray this morning as we dismiss. Lord, we're so grateful that you're a God that loves us and a God that wants to take the things inside of us that are not pleasing to you and to free us from those things. And so we pray that, Lord, this week that you would free us from the pride in our life and we give you the throne in that area. Lord, I pray that you would use this offering um, for your glory, for your kingdom, to grow it and to build it in your name. I pray all these things. Amen. Thank you all so much for joining us. Hope you guys have a great week. We'll see you next Sunday.